In the year 200 to BC, two mighty empires clashed in a battle that would determine the fate of the Mediterranean. This battle was between an army commanded by Scipio Africanus and an army by Hannibal. This is the story of the Battle of Zama, a defining moment in history that sealed the destiny of Carthage and Rome. In this battle, the Romans were supported by 6,000 Numidian infantry and 4,000 cavalry under Masinissa. The Roman army of approximately 30,000 men was outnumbered by the Carthaginians who fielded either 40,000 or 50,000. The Romans were stronger in cavalry, but the Carthaginians had 80 war elephants. The Roman army formed up, with the heavy infantry of its two Roman legions in the center, and with allied legions on each side of them. As usual, the Hastati formed the front rank with the Principes, and then the Triarii behind them. Instead of organizing each legion's maniples, the basic Roman infantry maneuver a unit of 120 men each, in the usual checkerboard or quincunx formation. Scipio ranged a principis maniple directly behind each maniple of Hastati. This left broad avenues through the Roman lines, which were occupied by the Roman light infantry, the Velites. Laelius led 1,500 Roman and allied cavalry positioned on the left. Mosinus's 4,000 Numidian cavalry were on the right of the infantry. There were a further 600 Numidian cavalry under Decamas, but it is not known whether they were attached to Mosinus's or Laelius's force. And the 6,000 Numidian infantry were stay for support of their cavalry guarding the Roman camp, supplementing the Velites as skirmishers or forming up as close order infantry to one side of the legions. The day has dawned, grim and terrible, but how much more terrible to be facing Romans such as us? Even now, fear must weaken the bowels of our foes. Those overly proud men over there are the Carthaginians. They think they are our equals, our enemies. I think they are waiting to die. They have been whipped to the battlefield like cattle for slaughter. 
We are even matched in numbers, man for man. But that does not tell the whole story. Yet, for all that, we are the stronger within ourselves. We are the greater warriors. Their elephants are going to be a problem, men, but one that we must face. So, let your battle cry be, victory! Victory and glory to Rome! Hannibal's command was made up of the survivors of three different armies. Hannibal had not had time to integrate the forces he had been allocated into a unified command, and so felt it wisest to deploy them separately. The Carthaginian infantry, like the Romans, went in the centre. Its first line was made up largely of veterans of Mago's failed expedition to northern Italy. The close order troops were Iberians, Gauls and Ligurians. In front of these heavy infantry were light infantry skirmishers, consisting of Balearic slingers, more archers and more unligurian javelin men. The total strength of this component was 12,000 men. In front of these infantry were the 80 war elephants, evenly spaced along the line, approximately 30 meters, 98 feet apart. Hannibal was sent out light infantry, in front of the whole Carthaginian army, in front of the elephants. For the several hours it took the army to form up. Carthaginians and other Africans made up the second line. The strength of the second line consisted of a further 12,000 men. The third line is variously estimated at 15,000 to 20,000 men. About 200 meters 700 feet behind the Carthaginian second line were the infantry Hannibal had brought back from Italy. Most of them were Brussians, but they included some Africans and Iberians who had left Iberia with Hannibal more than 17 years before and Gauls recruited in northern Italy in 218 and to 17 BC. All were battle-hardened veterans Hannibal fielded about 4,000 cavalry and divided them into two groups. In one of them, he placed the Numidians on the left flank, facing the Numidians of Mosinissa. The other group was the African cavalry on the right. The armies advanced towards each other. The first clashes occurring on the Carthaginian left flank. These skirmishes was desultory. Each army hurled javelins at the other and then withdraw. Hannibal then ordered a charge against the Roman infantry by his 80 elephants, with the whole of his first alliance moving forward in support. As the elephants advanced, the Velites moved forward into the gap between the armies, hurled javelins at the elephants and fell back. The Roman heavy infantry then sounded their bugles and possibly rhythmically banged their weapons against their shields, swashbuckling. This startled some of the elephants and several of those on the left turned and fled past the end of the line of infantry behind them. These out of control elephants trampled their way through the Carthaginian backing Numidian cavalry, thoroughly disordering them. 
Mosinissa took advantage of the situation by ordering a charge. This routed the disordered cavalry and they fled, pursued by Mosinissa's force. Most of the elephants charged into the Roman infantry. Amid showers of javelins, terrified by the swashbuckling infantry and their bugles, the sum of them stampeded into the broad gaps the Romans had left between their maniples. Many of the Velites were killed as they ran back in front of the elephants and into the gaps between the ranks of the heavy infantry. From there they hurled javelins into the elephants' flanks. Those elephants, which emerged into the rear of the Roman army, were all wounded and now cut off. They were subsequently hunted down and killed. Some elephants did charge into the Haystati as planned, where they caused heavy casualties before being driven off. Another elephant, bought at charging the Haystati on the Roman, left and attacked the cavalry alongside them, who also showered the elephants with javelins. Most of these elephants were badly wounded and had lost their crews by this point, those which could fled, avoiding the line of Carthaginian infantry, but not the Carthaginian cavalry on the right flank. This cavalry force became disorganized by the out-of-control elephants, unlike Masinissa. Laelius ordered his cavalry to take advantage of this and charge. The Carthaginian cavalry were swept from the field and the Roman cavalry closely pursued them. With the battlefield cleared of both elephants and cavalry, all three ranks of the Roman heavy infantry and the first two of Carthaginian advanced towards each other. The Carthaginian third rank, Hannibal's Italian veterans, remained in place. The two front ranks charged enthusiastically and violently into each other and commenced a hard-fought, close-quarter, hand-to-hand combat. The Romans' superior weaponry and organization eventually told, and despite the Haystati taking further heavy losses, the Carthaginian front rank broke and fled. The survivors of the front rank were forced to make their escape around the flanks of the second rank. Many of these then rallied and rejoined the fight by extending the flanks of the Carthaginian. Second rank. The Haystati. Despite having taken casualties from the elephants and the Carthaginian first rank, now attacked the Carthaginian second rank. The Carthaginians and other African spearmen, who made up this second rank fought fanatically and in an extraordinary manner. Romans were pushed back by the Carthaginians and came close to being broken at this stage. The Romans were forced to commit their second line, the Principles, to the fight. The Principes struggled to hold the line, but eventually, this reinforcement was sufficient to break the Carthaginian second line and they fled, pursued impetuously by the Haystati. The gap between the fighting lines was now covered with blood, slaughter and dead bodies. Slippery corpses which were still soaked in blood and had fallen in heaps. Hannibal's second line was more deliberate and orderly and he had hoped that the Romans would rush forward in pursuit at this stage. He had prepared an infantry envelopment in anticipation of this. 
In the event, Scipio to see the potential trap and his troops were disciplined enough to break off their pursuit and reform the new line. The Carthaginian Third Line Hannibal's veterans supplemented by some of the survivors of the first and second lines was longer than the Roman formation and outflanked it on both sides. The Haystati formed up in the centre and the Principes and Triari moved to each side to make a single, longer line. This enabled Roman close order infantry to match the length of the Carthaginians' third line, but correspondingly thin their line, preventing them from using their habitual tactic of feeding new, less fatigued men into the fighting line as combat wore on. The surviving heavy infantry of each side were roughly equal in numbers. Having satisfactorily reorganized, the two lines charged each other with the greatest fire and fury. The fight continued for some time, neither side gaining the advantage. Most of the original Carthaginian were equipped in the same manner. As the Romans they faced, they were veterans of many years' experience and they were fresh, having not yet fought. Many of the Romans were veterans too, some having fought at Cannae and almost all having taken part in the two, or four some three, major victories the previous year. It was a fierce and bloody battle. The cavalry commanded by Mosinissa and Laelius then returned to the battlefield at the same time and attached from all sides to begin an attack into their rear. Being fiercely engaged to their front, the Carthaginian infantry were helpless to prevent the Roman cavalry from charging into their rear. Their line collapsed and there was a great massacre. Hannibal was one of the few Carthaginians to escape. Twenty thousand Carthaginians were killed, and as many were taken prisoner. Eleven Carthaginian elephants survived the battle to be captured by the Romans. The Roman losses as 1,500 killed. This is 5% or more of their total force. After the battle, Hannibal reached the main Carthaginian base at Hadrumetum where he mustered 6,000 infantry and 500 cavalry. Hannibal considered this defew with which to continue the war and advised the Carthaginian Senate to make peace on whatever terms they could. The peace treaty the Romans subsequently imposed on the Carthaginians stripped them of their overseas territories and some of their African ones. An indemnity of 10,000 silver talents was to be paid over 50 years. Hostages were taken, Carthage was forbidden to possess war elephants and its fleet was restricted to 10 warships. 
the Carthage was fully politically subordinate to Rome. Scipio was awarded a triumph and received the Agnomen Africanus. This was the last battle of the Second Punic War. Thank you for watching my video, waiting for your comments, likes and subscriptions.